Okay, so today we're going to learn about the flame photometer. In flame photometry, we observe the atomic emissions of group 1 and group 2 metals, and as the name suggests, it involves a flame. So a few safety precautions before we start. As well as your usual safety precautions, you should make sure your hair is well tied back. You should also avoid putting your hand over the chimney because the gas coming out of there is going to be, unsurprisingly, hot. With those safety precautions in mind, let's have a look at the basic operation of a flame photometer. The first thing we turn on is the air compressor. The air compressor provides a consistent supply of air and also allows for the sample intake to operate correctly. Therefore, you must turn it on before operating the machine. The on-off switch allows us to turn on the machine, but before we do, we want to be able to see that the flame ignites. So the first thing that we do is we open the flame viewing window. Once we're happy the flame is ignited correctly, we can close the viewer and we can start using the machine. The first thing we need to do is decide what particular element we're going to measure. This particular model has three filters, sodium, potassium and lithium, and we can select the one that we want to use. In our case, sodium. This model also has four control wheels. The top two control the sensitivity, which we will come back to. The bottom left one allows us to zero it, and the bottom right controls the fuel mix. You probably won't need to adjust the fuel mix, since the machine will already be set up for you. At this point we want to zero the machine. The machine will drift the zero value will change if we leave it on for a while due to changing conditions. When we're zeroing the machine, we make sure that distilled water is being taken into the aspirator. In order to ensure a good consistency from our readings, usually we leave the machine to warm up for five to 10 minutes before we actually use it. Even so, there will be some drift. However, you shouldn't change the zero point between samples. It's important that there is a consistent supply of distilled water being taken into the nebulizer, so make sure you keep the beaker topped up with distilled water. It's very important not to use tap water as it contains a large amount of sodium. Next we're going to check the sensitivity is okay. In order to achieve this, we're going to take our most concentrated sample and see that it gives us a reading that is within a reasonable range. That is to say that it provides a three digit reading, but that the reading is not beyond the scale of what is measurable by the machine. If this is not the case, then we can adjust the sensitivity using both the coarse adjustment and the fine adjustment wheel. You will then have to re-zero the machine once you've picked a suitable sensitivity. You will have to change the sensitivity settings between each different metal that you measure. Okay, so let's make a reading. In order to make a reading, we take out the inlet for the aspirator and we put it into our sample. We then wait a number of seconds until we get a reading that is consistent. As you can see, the reading is inclined to drift, maybe plus or minus one or two in this case. That is within specifications. You should wait 10 or 20 seconds and record what appears to be the middle value. You should then return the inlet to the distilled water and allow it to aspirate for maybe 20 to 30 seconds to clear the machine until it returns to zero. Let's have a look inside the machine. Inside the machine you can see the gas flame burning away. And it makes sense now why the reading is not perfectly consistent and why you have some drift. When we introduce our sample, we see a change in the colour of the flame. That colour is due to the emission, due to the sodium atoms being excited and then emitting photons as they return to the ground state. These photons have a particular wavelength for a particular metal, and so we can measure that light and ignore all the other wavelengths of light that are emitted. Now let's make readings for all the other standards that we have. We'll put the inlet tube into the sample, wait 20 to 30 seconds until our reading is consistent, record that reading, return it to the water, aspirate for 20 to 30 seconds until it's gone back to zero, and repeat. Finally then, let's do our unknown sample. We follow exactly the same procedure, aspirate for 20 to 30 seconds, wait till we have a consistent value, and then record that value. Once we're finished, return the inlet tube to the distilled water, and wait for at least five minutes until you turn the machine off. So now we're all done. You can take your values, create your standard curve, and measure your unknowns. Before we go, Let's have a look at one or two other things. Flame photometry can be applied to many different metals. Here's one or two other examples. If we see barium, we expect a pea green flame. If we have lithium, we expect a red flame. We'll see that in a minute. Hopefully when you look at these, you can see why it's important to wait 20 to 30 seconds to make your reading, because it takes a while for the flame to become consistent. Okay, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was useful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or ask your lecturer in the lab and they can help you out.
feel free to watch one or two of my other videos that are appearing here on the left and right. That's all for now. Bye.